on to the rules, confirmations, and public elections special calls meeting. Um, it is uh, Thursday, February the 11th. Um, I'm going to do an electronic motion if I can get a second, and then I'm going to call roll. Um, pursuant to Governor Lee's uh, executive order number 71 regarding electronic meetings, I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes the central business of the Metropolitan Council and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Second. All right. Do we have any objections to that? If you will raise your hand. Um, seeing none, um, we'll just put into the record that everyone voted in the affirmative on that. Um, and now I'm going to call roll. Councilman Rosenberg. Present. Council Lady Evans. Present. Council Lady Lee. Council Lady Murphy, uh, she actually let me know she's in planning. Um, Councilman Rutherford. Here. Council Lady Sepulveda. Present. Councilman Sledge. Council Lady Stiles. Vice Chair Pulley. Here. All right, I'm gonna go back to Council Lady Lee. Mark is absent, Councilman Sledge. Mark is absent, and Council Lady Stiles. Mark is absent. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. We do have a quorum. All right. Um, the the purpose of this meeting uh, is to interview the 13 nominees for four open positions on the Community Oversight Board. Three are to be filled by nominations from community organizations or petition, and one is to be filled by nominations from council members. We have 90 minutes allotted for this meeting. So in order to keep uh, that meeting to this time period, each nominee will have an interview period of six minutes. I'm going to ask each candidate two questions, and then I'm going to open it up to council members giving committee members priority. Understanding that six minutes is likely not going to be enough time, I want to give the council members an opportunity to email me any additional questions for any nominee by noon tomorrow. Um, I'll have those questions answered, and then I will send them to the entire council before Tuesday's council meeting. Um, nominees, um, two questions that I'm going to be asking each of you are, one, why do you want to serve on this particular board? And two, what skills and experience do you have that, qual that qualify you to serve on the uh, community oversight board? The charter provides that the board members, quote, must have a demonstrated knowledge of issues pertaining to civil rights and equity and must have experience with criminal justice and police practices, end quote. So uh, when you're answering that second question, please address those specific requirements. Um, I hope everyone has uh, had the chance to review the questionnaires that each nominee filled out. I did ask Rosie to email them again to you. Um, that came in at about 3.49 um, because I've learned it to be at the top of your inbox for easy access and reference. Um, tonight, the committee will be voting on each nominee. I want to remind the committee that tonight's vote is not a vote for or against the nominee's confirmation, but rather it's a vote on whether or not the nominee is qualified to hold the position. The way I'm going to handle the vote is I'll ask anyone wishing to vote no to raise their virtual hand, and the nay voter will be identified and read into the record. All others will be listed as a yes vote. If you need to abstain from a certain vote, let me know. All right, let's get started. I'm just, um, the, we have the uh, agenda up on the screen uh, for you, and we're going to be taking people um, in that order, which is alphabetical. So I'm going to start with Mr. Edward Baylor. Madam Chair? Yes. I'm sorry. Could I just ask that everybody who's not speaking, please make sure you're muted. We're getting a little bit of interference. Yes. Thank you, Councilman Rosenberg. That's a good point. I'm going to look through here to see who is not muted, although I don't hear it anymore. So whoever, though, I think we've taken care of it. Perfect. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, okay. Mr. Edward Bla uh, Baylor, are you with us? Yes, I am. Perfect. Thank you so much for um, joining us tonight. Um, I'm going to get right to it because we've got six minutes. So um, why do you want to serve on this particular board? I want to serve on the board because I, I moved to Nashville in 1998 to go to Tennessee State University. And I've been here ever since. And what, what I see going on in the community, the lack of trust between the public and the police department, I want to be able to do about that. I want to be involved. 
it it shouldn't be going on. It can be fixed, and I'm willing to to put my time, my effort, and my expertise into rectifying the issue as best as I can. Okay. Um, what skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the community oversight board? I have. I'm a practicing attorney here in Davidson County. I've been practicing for the past 13 years with an emphasis on criminal and family law. Um, of course, in criminal law, you deal with um, civil rights, you deal with probable cause, you you deal with everything that, that the Community Oversight Board is actually reviewing and, and the interactions between the police department and the community. Um, I have that expertise. I have that experience with regard to establishing probable cause, with regard to looking at seeing whether a stop was valid or not, with regard to seeing whether or not a person's civil rights were violated, period. And I enjoy doing it. So I want to bring that expertise to the board if chosen, and I would focus on bridging the gap, that gap of trust between the community and the police department and the police department. Perfect. Um, do you have any other, uh, anything else that you would like to specifically say? I wanted to give you that opportunity. In my view, if there is a symbiotic relationship between any police department and the public. And the board itself came about because the public lacked trust with the police department. But the police department needs the public as much as the public needs the police department. The reason is, if you look at trust and if you look at the public's ability to trust the police department, without that trust, how do detectives get actual people in the public to come forward to give them information on crimes they're investigating? How do they convince individuals to come forward and testify in court as to a crime so a victim can actually receive justice? Without the trust, if, if people don't trust you, they don't want to talk to you. So it makes a detective's job that much harder, and it makes the police department's job that much harder. But you also have to look at the fact that a city's police department is the front-line defense for a community. A police officer is in a community more than anyone else that, except for the people that live there. So you have to have trust. You have to have that trust for the police department and for the community for the two to work together to solve crimes and to make sure the public is safe. Perfect. Thank you so much. I, I did want to add that um, Mr. Baylor was nominated by Feeding Music City and Councilman Roten. Uh, and I'm going to open it up for questions. So if you have a question, please raise your virtual hand. All right. See, oh, Councilman uh, Pulley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just very briefly, Mr. Baylor, you alluded a lot in your comments to a lack of trust between the yes. community and the police department. And in your answer to the opening question, you said it can be fixed. Um, tell me how uh, we can fix it. Well, it, it will take the police department and the community working together. Both sides are going to have to give a little bit a little bit in the, in the very beginning, because we've got to get back to a point to where you can trust the police department and the police department can trust the public. So one of the ways you can do that is you, you have more emphasis on police being in the community and speaking with people, communication. Part of the problem is the lack of communication between the two. An officer should be approachable in a community. People shouldn't be hesitant or have a sense of fear or lack of trust. So part of that takes part in seeing the officers more in the community and seeing them communicate more one-on-one. -on -one. Whether or not that can happen immediately, that's, that's, that's something that has to be looked at. But that's one aspect, just the communication factor of it. But it, it, it really takes, it's, it's going to take more hands-on 
it's going to take more of the police department being able to work with the community and the community being able to work with the police department. You have people on both sides. You have the community and you have the police department, one on one side and one on the other, and you have the community oversight board in the middle. The community oversight board, some of that responsibility, a lot of it will be on the board, but that gap has to be bridged through the board, period. Right now it does. Thank you for that. I have nothing further, Madam Chair. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? We've got 20 seconds left. All right, Mr. Baylor, if you want to use that last 15 seconds, we're now down to to say anything, you're welcome to it. I, I if chosen for the board, I look forward to, to working with the board. I'm a team player and I have one goal and one goal only, and that is to rebuild the trust between the community and the police department because we both sides need the other. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And again, I want to reiterate that if any council members um, have any other questions that we haven't been able to get to, please email me those and I will uh, I will handle those and um, get them answered for everyone. All right, moving on to Ms. Devette Blaylock, nominated by the Fraternal Order of Police and Councilman Nash. Um, Ms. Blaylock, are you with us? Do we know if Ms. Blaylock is with us? Yes, she's on the other line here, but she's um, not sure how to unmute herself. So it was just okay. a second. Okay. Or do we want to just move on and I can come back to her just in the interest of time? That'll be a good idea if you don't mind doing that. Elizabeth. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Sure. All right. Judge Joe Brown, nominated by Woodmont Estates Neighborhood Watch. Uh, Judge Brown, are you with us? Judge Brown, are we having some technical difficulties with him as well? Judge Brown is on the line. I so do see sure. his name. And he's not muted either. Um, IT, can we help Mr. Uh, sorry, Judge Brown? So what are you using to speak into? Are you using a microphone? Um, you might want to disconnect and connect again. Judge Brown, do you hear that? I mean, I know you can't. <laughs> hey, this is Elizabeth, and I did speak with him on the phone a short time ago, and he was having some issues with login, so there appears to be still some kind of a, a glitch somewhere. Okay. Well, can uh, hear me? Who is that? This is Devat. Can you guys hear oh, me? Perfect. We will go to... Um, we're going to come back to you, Ms. Blaylock. Thank you so much. And hopefully we will have Judge Brown um, join us, give him a little bit of time. All right. Um, Ms. Blaylock, uh, nominated by Fraternal Order of Police and Councilman Nash. Um, why do you serve on this particular board? Well, I, I heard Mr. Baylor, and uh, we're very similar in nature. It's it's all about trust. And, of course, when I was on council, I helped create the uh, board and have heard a numerous amount of people that wanted to be on the board and what they expected and wanted and just what the community wants out of their nominees for the board. So I know people are looking for somebody who is going to, listen to both sides very clearly and do a lot of due diligence, do a lot of studying about each and every situation, and then um, bringing the community together is something that I just, I've just always wanted to do and always be a part of that in any, any way I can. I think this board is um, one of the most important boards we have going on right now. So I would just love to continue to serve. I think I've got it now. It looks like it's working. I can see where you're in. Okay, let me let me mute myself. Here. Please mute. Sorry about that. Okay, what skills and experience yeah. do you have to qualify you uh, to serve on the Community Oversight Board, Ms. Blaylock? Well, my... Just being on council is really the main thing that I have that would be a qualification, just dealing with the public, hearing all sides uh, on a regular basis, whether they're complaining about the police or the, or the police 
asking for more uh, help from the community. So um, that's uh, just just being in the community and being an active leader in the community is, is my number one, I guess, uh, attribute. All right, thank you so much. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to add? I wanna give you that opportunity before no, I open it up for questions. I, I guess not. Okay, all right. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Blow? Ms. Uh, Council Lady Sepulveda, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I read in, through your questionnaire that uh, your experience in building trust with the community and, and the police department was hosting police classes. Can you elaborate on that? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't host, I, I was, I joined their class. So they had, and I forget the name of it, um, it was fairly new, but it was a long event and um, uh, council members and community leaders got to go to it and you learned a lot about the police um, and their day-to-day what they have to deal with. You had role playing. It was very interesting. Uh, you learned a lot. And it was something that I think they need to continue doing. And as many people that want should be able to go to those meetings uh, or their, you know, those informational lessons. And the citizens, I have yet to go to the citizens. Um, the, the course they offer for, for all the citizens, but that is a different type of course. But those things are, are good. We need to keep doing those. We need to let the community know that they're available. And um, yeah. Thank you. Council Lady Sepulveda, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Okay, absolutely. Does anybody else have any questions for um, Ms. Blaylock? I'm looking through hands. Um, and I forgot to take the vote uh, on the previous nominee. I'm going to take the vote for Blaylock, Ms. Blaylock right now, and then I will go back to uh, Mr. Baylor. So right now, if you have um, any objection, and again, I'm going to remind us, this is not about um, the their confirmation, whether or not you want them to be confirmed. This is just, are they qualified to hold this position? So does anybody have any uh, objection to Ms. Blaylock? Please raise your hand. I am seeing none. All right. Um, and going back to uh, Mr. Baylor, does anybody have any objection to Mr. Bl to Mr. Baylor and his qualifications? Please raise your hand and I am seeing <clears throat> none. All right, thank you. All right, I do believe we have Judge Brown with us now. Are we got it worked out, Judge Brown? I hope so. I don't have I don't have video apparently, but uh, I do have audio now. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I'm going to ask you two questions. I don't know if you heard this before because I think you were having some issues. I'm going to ask you two questions, um, and then I'm going to open it up. Um, to, to the rest of the council members. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? I think it's a very important board given the circumstances we face today with uh, all of the uh, situations, uh, police uh, brutality, and obviously we've had uh, the riots here in Nashville. And I think it's important that we try to have a, an understanding uh, with the police department and build support uh, for the police department department when they're correct and file reports uh, when they're when they're not and I think it needs an open dialogue with the police department and and frankly to help the police department have good community relations I think we've had problems over the years and I think uh, we've got a new chief and I think this is a great opportunity to to try to build trust between the two and uh, when there are problems to help uh, point them out and, and solve them. As I say, I've lived through uh, some of the earlier problems in Nashville with uh, sit-ins back in the uh, early 60s when I was at Vanderbilt and I've been here uh, since uh, 1971 now, uh, 
as U.S. Attorney and uh, Department of Justice, and the last 22 years as a magistrate judge, where I've issued uh, a lot of search warrants and uh, handled a lot of civil rights cases over the years. And apparently, I do a lot of mediation. So I think I have the ability to help uh, get people together. Thank you so much. And since you weren't here, uh, or you may not have heard this before, I'm going to repeat um, that the charter provides that the board members must have a demonstrated knowledge of issues pertaining to civil rights and equity and must have experience with criminal justice and policing uh, practices. So keeping that in mind, what skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? Well, as uh, an assistant U.S. attorney and U.S. attorney for 21 years, I've dealt pretty extensively with criminal law, everything from being the lead prosecutor on uh, former Governor Blanton's case on, and as a magistrate judge, I issued warrants uh, regularly, So, and then also uh, presided, uh, tried civil rights cases, and uh, presided over them. So I've spent, and my military experience was also in the criminal area. So I've basically got 50 years plus uh, experience in the uh, criminal area and in handling civil rights matters. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything else that you want to say before I open it up um, to the rest of the council members to ask questions? No, I think um, I've retired recently as magistrate judge and I think I have the time and the ability to devote to uh, the important work of the board. Thank you so much. Council Lady Gamble, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Brown, for uh, coming today and your interest in serving on the Community Oversight Board. You mentioned that you have extensive experience with uh, civil rights cases. Could you give us an example and name one of the cases uh, that you have worked on? Oh, I wouldn't have the name of it, but as back in many years ago as U.S. Attorney, prosecuted a number of police officers for uh, civil rights violations, uh, and as a magistrate judge, uh, I normally uh, participated in managing uh, 1983 civil rights cases, uh, well, handling all the discovery issues, and I uh, handled, uh, presided over jury trials of uh, cases where the an inmate has sued a uh, police officer for brutality and. In the last uh, year, I've uh, helped mediate a large number of cases where there's been a civil rights violation, and uh, I've worked with the parties to uh, reach a resolution of the case. So I've had quite a bit of experience with civil rights cases, uh, both as a U.S. Attorney's Office and as a judge. Thank you. Councilman Pulley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Your Honor. Just as a follow-up to Council Lady Gamble's question, um, with respect to your time both as a professional um, assistant U.S. attorney as an appointed U.S. attorney, um, when you speak to civil rights cases in general, uh, more specifically uh, within the framework of civil rights cases, uh, also falls unlawful use of force on the part of the police department. And as a U.S. attorney, uh, I, I know that uh, in the FBI, we investigated those cases and brought them to your office. So um, you would have been responsible for both prosecuting uh, those cases and, um, and uh, seeing hearings on those cases as a United States mag magistrate judge, would you not? That's correct. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have any other questions? We have 17 seconds. Judge Brown, you can use these 12 seconds now, however you see fit. No, I, I feel I'm qualified and I'm eager to uh, work with the board and uh, I think that's enough said. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. If you will raise your electronic hand, if you have an objection to this nomination. Councilman Pulley, do you want to, is that an oops? 
Okay. Raise my electronic hand because I certainly am not used this can be. Okay. All right. I'm seeing none. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to Ms. Mary Bird, nominated by the Fraternal Order of Police. Ms. Bird, are you with us? Oh, uh, yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Well, this is my second time to apply. The first time I applied by nominating my 50 signatures, and this time the FOP nominated me. My wish is to represent the community as a bipartisan member because I, I have both sides of the aisle that have involved with my family. I have criminal attorneys, police officers. I've been a Davidson County citizen my whole life. I graduated from John Overton High School. I'm a retired um, certified registered nurse anesthetist, and I'm looking to contribute to my community. And I feel strongly that there can be a relationship between the community and the police department that can benefit, benefit both parties. Thank you. And what skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the community oversight board? I've been to the Citizens Police Academy, um, graduated. I've participated in the National Pu Nashville Public Library Civil Rights class and tour. I've um, read multiple books and articles about civil rights to refresh myself with the aspects of mostly the, the criminal aspect of it. Um, so I, I'm just interested in there being a dialogue between the police department and the community that is healthy on both parts. Thank you so much. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to specifically add before I open it up? Oh, no, go ahead. All right. If you have a question for Ms. Bird, please raise your hand. All right. Seeing no hands. Oh, now I do. Um, I don't know who went first because they both popped up at the same time. Council Lady Stiles. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Bird, for coming today. I heard you reference having uh, experience in, in wanting to represent this board. You have many people in your family that are in law enforcement what is the, I guess, the balancing end of that? Do you know anyone that has been through the criminal justice system as well that gives you a unique perspective to represent uh, on this board? Well, yes, I, I, I know multiple people that have been through the system and I have lived here my whole life. So like I said, I was born and raised here. So I, I know many people that have been through the system and I just feel like this community needs to come together and be able to communicate with each other. I, there's no reason that they can't. And it frustrates me to watch a wall go up between the community and the police. I, I don't think it's necessary. And I want to do everything in my power to try to fix that. Sounds like Styles, anything else? Thank you, Chair. I, I think that I, I think that covers it. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Council Lady Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I just wanted to follow up on uh, something you stated, Ms. Bird, um, because I, I was going to ask um, what what um, qualifications or, or, or research you had done in civil rights and equity besides um, uh, some reading and, and watching some um, some material on the subject, and you stated that it, it had mainly to do with the criminal aspect of it. Can you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Well, sure. I I have um, four criminal attorneys in my family, and I have um, police officers in my family, and I've watched each of the. I probably, I guess high profile is a way to word that, go through the media and, and go through the local process. And when I retired last year, I just wanted to be a part of something that wanted to fix the communication barrier. And, I, you know, there are many things that I can still do. 
that will educate myself as far as like civil rights and um, police. But I'm just interested. In, that's why I've applied twice to this committee because I'm just very interested in participating and be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Councilor Lisa Paul, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody else have any further questions for Ms. Bird? I am not seeing any other hands. We have um, 54 seconds. Ms. Bird, I'm happy to, to give you the floor for that, your remaining amount of time, if you'd like to add anything. Um, sure, just a couple of things. Um, I, you know, I'm not a police officer, but I think that we obviously need policing in Nashville with the growth and all the things that are happening in our in our town we need to have a police presence I you know I am not an attorney I, but I also have educated a daughter who's a criminal attorney I not haven't educated her I've watched her be educated but I, I just have been a witness to many things in this community over my 60 years and I just want to support my community and be a good citizen. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Ms. Bird. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Uh, if you have any objections to this nomination, please raise your electronic hand. I am seeing none. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Arnold Hayes, are you with us? Yes. Yeah. Welcome. Um, why do you want to serve on this particular board? First, I'd like to say good afternoon and, and uh, to everyone, and, and I'm pleased to come before this committee to uh, convey my qualifications for being on the community oversight board. I'd like to use my time to, uh, I'll first answer the two questions, but I would also like to use my, my six minutes to expand on why I would like to be on the board. But first of all, I want to be on the Community Oversight Board because I would like to make uh, Nashville a safe, safer city for all. And having been an early proponent of, of community oversight, I hope to bring my knowledge, experience, and research and lessons learned and passion uh, to the board. My qual the qualifications that I have is I've been a social justice activist for quite some time, fighting and looking out for the least of these. And I've also uh, uh, worked for Fortune 500 companies, uh, met leading and managing teams in a unionized environment. Uh, I've also uh, had ex I've been active in the faith community at the state, local, and national level. So now I'd like to uh, just expand on some of the reasons why I'd like to be on the Community Oversight Board. Uh, okay. And I'd like to say so far, I'm pleased with the, the work of the Community Oversight Board and it would be quite an honor for me to be a part of, uh, of actually taking this board to another level. If selected, I would bring the values that I have to the board. My active faith demands that I love all people. My high work ethic insists that I strive for excellence in everything that I do. I try to leave it all on the field in the arena of life. I always remember the shoulders on which I stand. I remember the sacrifices made by so many change agents so that a person that looks like me can even be considered for a board like the Community Oversight Board. I respect and have empathy for the challenging job that law enforcement does. I repeat, I have respect and empathy for the challenging job that law enforcement does. But I don't believe that the 1% of officers that commit police misconduct deserve a free pass just because they're law enforcement. This way of thinking puts all officers at risk, and this is not right. If selected, I will bring my education professional experience and years of service to the board. The sense of accountability for meeting goals and objectives in a corporate sector, leading and managing and motivating employees and work teams in a unionized environment, preparing budgets, manufacturing specifications, bids, packages, operating procedures. 
handling a high level of pressure in a manufacturing environment, like getting robots up and running to avoid losing millions of dollars, using formal problem solving techniques to address issues, serving on local, state, and national boards, serving in inner city Nashville by co-starting mobile food pantries for, that has lasted 10 years and starting a college, uh, college scholarship fund that's lasted 20 years. And I've also worked on Habitat for Humanity Homes. If selected, I will bring the aggressive approach the CO, to the COB that I, use, that, was, that I use to help get Amendment 1 passed. I will work just as hard for the COB as I did to get Amendment 1 passed. I will view failure as not being an option because lives depend on it. I will continue to research ways to continually improve the board. I will educate Nashville on the importance of the Community Oversight Board to all of Nashville. I will bring my ground game to the COB and stand in the rain for the COB if necessary. Any setbacks that the COB experiences, I will only, it will only make me more determined to achieve its mission. And finally, you have my application. You have a brief bio, you have my resume, you have reference letters from some well-respected individuals. Some of you have witnessed my justice work over the years. With the exception of the candidate that has previously served on the board, I'm the only candidate that will be able to significantly contribute to the board on day one. I'm ready to get to work on tasks like monitoring the effectiveness of the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding. I'm ready to follow up on the pending policy review recommendations outlined in the COB annual report. Now you and the entire council get to decide if I get to serve Nashville in an official capacity on the Community Oversight Board. Again, I thank you and I ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Hayes? Please raise your hand. Um, and I did want to mention that um, he was nominated by the Community Oversight Now and Council Members Hurt and Rosenberg. Any questions? Seeing none. You have 30 more seconds if you want to use them. <laughs> I will just say, uh, this is not my first rodeo. I have the uh, wealth of knowledge and experience. And uh, I started looking at community oversight boards back in 2016, long before Jacquees Clemens and Daniel Hammer were, uh, uh, were killed in, in an officer-involved shooting. I think I set my timer, so I guess my time's up. <laughs> I was going to say you've got one second. One second. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Um, if anybody has any objections to this nominee, please raise your electronic hand. And I am seeing none. Thank you so much, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Ms. Brandy Hayes, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Um, Ms. Hayes was nominated by the Fraternal Order of Police. Why do you want to serve on this particular board, Ms. Hayes? Hi, everyone. Um, the reason why I would like to serve on the board is um, I would like to bring my own personal experience with law enforcement um, to the table. My dad was um, 35 years um, deputy in Hamilton County and my uncles, um, cousins, everyone um, has been in law enforcement all their life. I'm engaged to a police officer um, and I really support my community and I support what I call my police department. Um, I have a sincere passion for police and I think that Chief Drake is a great man and he's going full steam ahead with this department making huge changes. And he's also like pushing morale um, to get everybody back to the place that they need to be. And I'm pretty familiar with um, MNPD's um, policies and procedures, um, like their training and the ongoing education that they go through um, since I am engaged to an officer. 
um, I would like to be, you know, I know that I'm a very fair person and a very open-minded person. And I think that, you know, I can help represent the 99% of the good people who, um, you know, no one hates a bad cop more than a good cop. And I know that firsthand. And um, I think that I can just bring a lot of different um, sides to the table um, to help with our community and putting, you know, all of this back together again. Thank you. What skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the community oversight board? Um, I think like as far as me being familiar with um, Metro's policies and procedures, um, their um, tactical training, um, I'm a critical thinker, a team player. I've done ride-alongs. I've been very active in my dad's career throughout my life um, up until he retired about five years ago. Um, I'm very close friends with many people um, in high positions and other departments throughout Tennessee. And I, I see what works for them, um, you know, and, and can offer a lot of great ideas you know, to help bring our community and our department back together, especially after what all took place last year. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Hayes? Please raise your hand. All right, I am seeing not, oh, there, sorry. Um, Councilman Rosenberg, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Hayes. Uh, I'm sorry, I might have misunderstood. Did you say that you're engaged to a police officer? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I don't want to ask a personal question about your engagement, but I, I know that the board does not allow the spouse of somebody who's an employee of a law enforcement agency uh, so how would you, moving forward, handle that conflict? As far as, like, getting married? Uh, I, I don't... I, I'm just saying, do, do you foresee a conflict while no, during because, what your um, term on the board would be? Okay. I'm very, um, very matter of fact, I'm very open-minded. What's fair is fair. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. And there's no there's no gray area on that. Um, and I guess, I don't know, maybe I should have went to law school. Um, <laughs> I just, there's, I don't, I don't allow the two to mix. Sure, I, I life appreciate and, that. Because I mean, we even, we even have our arguments. Um, over sure. you know, things that go on and um, because I stand on, you know, the side of what I feel is right and what the, you know, the case at hand is. It's not a matter of, of what people, you know, other people think. It's, it's about the facts. And if we don't have the facts, you know, I can't make those decisions and he doesn't have anything to do with, you know, my opinion. Sure. I appreciate that. And I take you at your word on that. I guess I'm asking whether you foresee during what your term on the board would be a conflict with the language in the charter that says that somebody who is a spouse, I, and I, I guess I should make sure that that's not just a question on the questionnaire and is actually, um, a qualification. Do you foresee being during your, what your term on the board would be being the spouse of a person who is a current employee of any law enforcement agency? Uh, no, we probably would not. It's our plans are, you know, down the road. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. No problem. So you have a great day. Sure. Director Cooper, you have your hand raised. You're recognized. Uh, yes, I was just going to answer Councilmember Rosenberg's question that the Metro Charter prohibits a member from being the spouse of a law enforcement officer. So that's a specific requirement in the Charter. Uh, it's not applicable to persons who are engaged, but it is applicable for spouses. Okay, so if they were to get married while she was serving, she would have to resign her position? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. All right. Um, our time is up. If anyone has any other questions, I saw uh, Council Lady Stiles hand go up. It's not up anymore. But if anybody has any questions uh, further from Ms. Hayes, please um, email email them to me and I will handle that for you. Um, does anybody have any objection to this particular nominee? Please raise your uh, electronic hand. Councilman Rosenberg, are you objecting or is that an old hand? Oh, there we go. <laughs> it disappeared. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I am seeing none. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hayes. Uh, Ms. Stephanie, uh -huh. Ms. Stephanie Kang, are you with us? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Thank you for the question. First, just thank you so much for holding these interviews, Metro Council, um, Community Oversight Board staff, and Community Oversight Board members. I'm so excited to be here uh, and hopefully help you get to know me a little bit better. Um, the COB in just the last couple years since its existence has become such an important instrument in the community. And I think it's so critical in terms of its role in ensuring accountability and building community well-being and I'm hoping that I can contribute a unique role to the COB. Um, my background and training is all in public health and policy. Uh, and so maybe it's not as obvious why public health um, would be connected to this, but you know, I went into health because health is at the foundation of everything and it's at the center of having well-being and a strong community. And I'm hoping to bring that public health lens to this work. Um, I also uh, was nominated by the Asian Pacific Islander of Middle Tennessee uh, organization. And as far as my understanding is, is that there has not been an API member on the COB. And so we just love to bring that representation of the API community. The zip code I'm in has the highest percentage of API members in Nashville. And then also in terms of my zip code, um, this is a zip code I grew up in uh, and now I've returned to as an adult. And, um, you know, I would just, I, I, I'm, I have seen myself the interactions with um, between the community and the police uh, department and you know would just love to, for my community specifically my zip code to also be represented on the COB. Um, and I also just lastly I, I know the COB from the conversations I've had with various members and from what I've seen on the outside this is not just a position to show up and attend and then you check a box. It's very clear that it requires a lot of responsiveness and intentionality. I've loved the policy recommendations that y'all have put out already, all the work that you've done. I've read your reports um, and just would love the opportunity to work closely with your staff too and be able to contribute what I what I know in terms of policy translation. Um, and then also learn from each and one of you because you guys all, it's very impressive when I've seen the list, you all have a lot more skills than I do in this uh, certain area but I'm hoping to contribute my public health background. Thank you. And what skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? Sure. Um, so from a professional level, I mentioned public health, I think, it, and also I have a behavioral science background. And so just really bringing a multidimensional lens um, and also uh, a lot of work in policy. I currently work for a Congress member um, and so have worked a lot um, in public health, but also in violence prevention. And so really understand just, you know, how complicated um, and uh, all the nuance that goes into this type of legislation um, and guidelines. Um, I've also have a lot of experience working with a lot of different stakeholders. Every day, my work is working with all different types of constituents and stake, um, and different organizations and representatives and being able to build consensus around a very diverse group of people um, is something that I've really come to enjoy. And I, I'm always willing to have those difficult conversations um, to get to a point of consensus. And then lastly, I'll just say, um, I, I mentioned this on my questionnaire, but on a personal level, um, my family uh, a few years back had you know, a very prolonged experience, both with um, the police department and also in, with the criminal justice system. And even with someone with my level of privilege and education and background, you know, there are so many times where I found myself unable to navigate the system and know when, when, what were my rights and what was allowed and on both sides. And, and it really gave me a perspective on what, when it goes well, how well it can go and when it doesn't. And also just gave me a lot of perspective too, that there's so much gray area again on both sides and that there's just this really deep level of acknowledgement of context in detail to these types of scenarios that's really critical 
and in order to understand what's unfolding um, when these very complex situations happen. Thank you so much. Councilor Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Kong, uh, you stated uh, that you have experience building data systems and um, you said it, it it's critical to capture the uh, information to, to make recommendations and guideline uh, uh, produced by the COB. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, without evidence, really, there's it's very difficult to create reports or guidelines or be able to make a compelling case, be able to make compelling messaging and be able to first reach your community and also make a compelling case for all the partners and with the Metro National Police Department. And so I thank you for bringing that up, Council Member. Um, I do have significant experience in building data systems, collecting data, um, analyzing data, and then the most critical part, translating that data. It doesn't matter if you can collect a bunch of Numbers, if you're not able to really interpret it uh, and be able to write it up in a way that's um, digestible for the public and for others. And so um, I've done that in a lot of different contexts. I've done in the healthcare context, um, both in terms of gun violence and also in public health, different matters um, and also various uh, settings. Great, thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? And I did I mispronounce your last name? No, you're fine. The Korean version is Kong, the American version is Kang. So either one I respond to. So, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. I, I yeah. hate doing that to people, so I, um, I apologize. Um, all right. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Seeing none, you actually have, well, it's six seconds. So I'm, I'm, I think uh, that's I'll probably just say thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Does anybody have any objections to this nominee? Um, I'm not seeing any hands. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here with us tonight. Um, all right, moving on to Ms. Michaela McCree. Uh, Ms. McCree, are you with us? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Perfect, thank you for joining us. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Well, I wanna first start by saying good afternoon and thank you for having me in this space. Um, I currently serve, or I'm a recent graduate of Tennessee State University and currently serve as a staff assistant for Congressman Jim Cooper. Um, I'm interested in serving on the Community Oversight Board because as a daughter of a formerly incarcerated person um, and the soon to be daughter-in-law of a sergeant who serves in the state of Tennessee for almost 30 years, I believe that I bring an extremely balanced perspective and a fresh perspective as someone under 30 to the board. One thing that I would love to bring to the board um, is the relationship with individuals in our community under 30, specifically those who come from minority and economically distressed backgrounds. The Community Oversight Board, I feel we could build a partnership with all four of the historically black colleges and universities in this in the Davidson County area. Um, in my time at Tennessee State University, um, I invoke conversations around criminal justice and pick the brains of my peers um, in that space. And one thing and theme that was common throughout those conversations is the stress, um, the stress relationship that young black youth feel as it relates to law enforcement and relationships um, and conversations are the best way to mend that ease. Another thing um, I wanted to focus on if appointed to the board is collecting data. Programs like the school resource officer program, I think we need more data in that area to ensure its effectiveness and its efficiency. Um, but without the supporting data, it's hard to really clarify if those two things are the case. Thank you. And what skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? Of course. So I would like to speak um, to my experience. Um, the first experience I would like to speak to is in 2014, after Michael Brown was fatally shot. Um, I was in Atlanta at the time, and there was a lot of anger and pain amongst black youth in the city. Um, so I worked with local churches in Atlanta, Georgia, to pull together a committee um, built of law enforcement officers um, and students to have a conversation about the feelings of black youth, um, 
for law enforcement officers to give their perspective on the situation, um, and also to have conversation and educational conversation about the role of law enforcement in our communities, um, the training of law enforcement in our communities, and how all of those things come together. The second experience I would love to point to um, is my time with Tennessee State University's emergency management. Um, while in that office, we worked closely with the not only um, the TSU Police Department, but the Metro Nashville Police Department on the campus of Tennessee State University. And in the office, I was the person collecting data from students about how they felt um, as it relates to the safety on campus, the safety of the city. And I could use those same data collecting skills to collect the data we need around our school resource officer program. The last issue or the last experience I'll point to is my time with serving as the director of operations for the Jim Cooper for Congress campaign. During that time, um, as the director of operations, I was in charge of all community engagement as for the um, campaign team. And so being able to reach a multitude of communities, um, hear their needs and their their wants, what they wanted to see in office and the people who represented them gave me great relationship building skills and it provided me an experience of meeting with people from all sectors of our community um, and I believe that I have the capacities to serve them on the board. Thank you so much. Councilman Rutherford, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I have a brief uh, comment and, and a question. Uh, Ms. McCree is a constituent of mine in District 31 in Southeast Nashville, and I enthusiastically uh, endorse her candidacy. Uh, as we review candidates uh, for this um, board, and uh, as we do for all boards and commissions within Metro, uh, diversity is very important, obviously. And an important piece of diversity is uh, diversity of age. And I think Ms. McCree is a, is a powerful voice uh, for young people in Nashville. And, and that is the type of voice uh, we really need uh, on the COB, uh, given the nature of its work. Uh, and that leads me to my question uh, of Ms. McCree. Uh, Ms. McCree, can you speak to us uh, about how your service uh, with uh, Jim Cooper's office, Congressman Cooper's office, has prepared you for service on COB? Of course, and thank you so much for your recommendation, <laughs> Councilman. Working in Congre Congressman Jim Cooper's office um, has granted me a lot of access to community organizations and to the community itself. Um, working day to day with people, um, hearing their problems and their plight, um, and finding creative solutions, even if our office can't help them um, directly, I'm able to point them to other places and spaces in which they're able to receive the help that they need. And I think that's exactly what the board is for and what the board has the cap capacity to do. Um, if there's a case that we hear or if there's um, a person who comes to the board um, and they need help, maybe this is not the space for their assistance, but there are community organizations out there and there are sections within our community where I know they can receive that, that help. And I'm dedicated to the members of the community um, and helping to solve whatever problem they have um, in the best way I know how. Thank you. We've gone over our six minutes. I, I see Council Lady uh, Styles hand. Council Lady Styles, if you will email me your question that you have uh, for Ms. McCree, I will get that to her and get that answered for everyone and share. Um, does uh, I wanted to also say that um, Ms. McCree was nominated not not only by Councilman Rutherford but by Stand Up Nashville as well. Does anyone have any objection to this nominee? Please raise your uh, your electronic hand. Council Lady Styles, are you objecting? There we go. All right. Seeing no hands. Thank you so much, Ms. McCree. All right, Ms. Sarah um, Pascal, I'm hoping I'm saying that properly. Are you with us? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. All right. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? I want to serve on the uh, community oversight board. Um, I've actually wanted to do it, wanted to be on it since it had first originally um, started. I did put an application, but I don't believe I did it correctly. 
But um, I want to bring an unbiased um, decision making to the board, meaning that, you know, being able to listen to both sides of the of the, you know, both sides of the police and also on the community and not allowing media or um, the news to sway me in any direction to be able to use the evidence presented and being able to do the investigation into issues between the police and the community and be able to provide a fair and unbiased um, decision making on it. Um, I really feel that um, an average Jane, maybe like me, would be a, an asset to the board, as in that um, people in the community would look more towards somebody that is able to feel on their side just as much as the police's side. So being able to um, connect with them in that they feel more comfortable than somebody who is maybe, you know, had, you know, a lot more, you know, police experience, been a judge, been a lawyer, been a, you know, congressman, you know, they want to, they need somebody that they can relate to, you know, be on a personal side versus, you know, being scared to talk to somebody um, that they feel like they're not listening to them. Um, I also feel that um, I can bring a lot to the community. Um, I do have my own nonprofit or organization that I commit. Um, I started. Um, I reach out to the community. Um, I'm a very good listener, very good investigator. Um, I don't let other people's opinions um, sway mine. I look at the evidence and I make my decision based on the proven evidence in front of me. Thank you. What skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? I do have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration along with an associate's degree in criminal justice. I've been, I studied, um, I was always interested in criminal justice since I was 15 years old. Um, I went through a program to what McGavick has in their pathways as in um, a criminal justice experience. So I did the training through them. Um, I was also a um, campus police officer at the community college back in California, where I'm from. Um, so I do understand the uh, the aspects of policing and community service at the same time. In my job right now, also, I do deal with a lot of, uh, nothing has to do with, with um, uh, criminal justice or anything like that, but I do, I am a hearings analyst. I do deal with lots of evidence. Uh, speaking with judges and um, presenting evidence to the judges. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Ms. Pascal? Okay. Not seeing any hands. Well, you have uh, two and a half more minutes. If you would like to use those two and a half minutes, you are welcome to do so. Yeah, I just, I, re I really want to be able to be a part of uh, a community that is looking, you know, trying to make sure that they're looking out for both, you know, the people in our community and also making sure that, you know, holding our police uh, responsible for their actions, whether, you know, if it is, you know, based on that they did some misconduct or uh, violated any ethical issues. Um, I may not have a lot of civil rights experience, but what I lack in the civil rights experience is, and ethics is I am a very uh, fast learner. Um, and you, I can be molded into the way that it should be done. I don't have a set mindset where my way is the right way and that's the only way there is. So I'm one of the people that, you know, I'm a born leader, born learner, lifelong learner, and I just want to learn more and be more involved in this process. All right. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any more questions? We still have one more minute left. So want to give that opportunity. All right, seeing none, we will go to the vote. Does anyone have any objections to this nominee? Please raise your hand. I am seeing none, thank you so much. 
Mr. Joseph Ravenel. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Did I yes. say that right? Yes, okay, ma'am. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, I did want to say, I'm sorry, that um, Ms. Ms. Pascal was nominated by a Magnitude 10.0 Gymnastics. Um, Mr. Joseph Ravenel is nominated by Petition and Councilman Rosenberg. Um, Mr. Ravenel, why do you want to serve on this particular board? By way of background, um, this is my third time to live in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm from a little small town in South Carolina. Um, there's, I have no family members that are involved in law enforcement, so I'm the very first one in my family to be involved, and in, I'm a former law enforcement person. Um, but I have the time, and I'm looking forward to uh, working you know, on the board and serving as a board member. Yeah, as we all know, there is mistrust in the community. I've seen that grow in the years that I've been here in Nashville. I've watched uh, at least three police uh, chiefs uh, come and go. Uh, when I watch TV now and I see the current uh, police chief, there's something I think that uh, he, he says, that he says, I think it resonates in my heart that I think uh, this is a good time in history for me to step out from uh, sitting you know, at home and for me to, 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 to do something for my community. I've done some other volunteer work in the past, but I want to show my, myself and I want to show my family that this is the way to do it. You have to step out and, 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 and do things. I think it's time for me and for the community to try to break down that wall between police and, uh, and the community. And I think that I can help. And I think I have my work experience and my past history will show in a second that um, I will bring a unique perspective to the, to the board. And I hope that you guys uh, look at my history and my resume and that you will uh, support me. Thank you. And uh, what skills experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the community oversight board? Well, to start with, I have uh, 21 years of federal law enforcement. That's federal law enforcement, not just in Tennessee, but uh, in different states, New York, uh, Georgia, uh, overseas in South Africa, um, and elsewhere. I've traveled, I've worked with federal agencies, I've served uh, subpoenas, I've served, I've talked, I've been a, a, a witness in a grand jury. Uh, I have uh, worked in civil rights cases, um, and um, I, I mean, I've executed probable cause, and, I've, and I've, I think that my experience over 21 years in federal law enforcement will give me an insight to uh, how the police work, some of the practices that the police use, and I think I'm in a position that I can help the other board members understand some of the reasons why a police officer might do X, Y, or Z. On the other side of the fence, um, I'm currently an investigator for the Federal Public Defender's Office. I've been in this office about 13 or 14 years. So from this perspective, I can see the other side. I mean, I can see uh, from looking at discovery items, uh, I can see some of the tactics that the police use. Um, and based on my experience on the, on the other side of law enforcement, I can sort of see the balance between why police do certain things and then be able to better explain that maybe to the other board members. Um, I think that that experience is unique. I don't think anyone else can bring those qualifications to the, uh, to the, to the board. And thirdly, as uh, with all my training in federal law enforcement, uh, I've taken classes about civil rights violations, what they mean in terms of when a police officer goes beyond the call of duty and does unlawful acts. In my current job, my office has represented police officers who have been charged with unlawful uh, conduct, and I've been able to investigate those uh, cases, and I've seen the down, the dirty. I've seen some of the more graphic things that can happen when uh, police officers misuse their power. So I think with between my law enforcement uh, career and my 13 years in the Federal Public Defender's Office, I think I'm uniquely qualified and I can uh, help the uh, board. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Mr. Ravenel? Please raise your hand. I'm looking. I don't see any questions. You have a minute and 45 seconds. If you would like to say anything else, Mr. Ravenel, you are welcome to your time. I, I think overall with my experience in working, not just in, uh, in Nashville, but in New York and Georgia, 
uh, I think that I've, I think I can really, really help the board uh, go forward. I know the board has done some great works, and I just think that uh, with my overall qualification is that I can really uh, help the board move forward. Thank you. Absolutely. Right. Again, if anybody has any questions, please raise your hand. I'm going to look. And I don't see any. All right. Does anybody have any objections? Uh, objection to this nominee? Please raise your virtual hand. And I am seeing none. Thank you so much. All right. Moving on to Miss uh, Brenda Ross. Miss Ross, are you with us? Is Ms. Ross with us? I don't know that I see her. I'm having, I was having trouble with my uh, mute button. Okay. Can there. you hear me? Yes, there okay. you are. Thanks okay. for joining us. Why do you want to serve? Absolutely. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Okay, I would like to continue representing the Nashville community as a whole. I've been a community activist for many years in Nashville, part of many organizations and agencies uh, addressing community safety. I also uh, am present, well, I rolled off the board in January, but I was elected in August as second chair of the executive committee for the oversight board. So I would like to uh, continue the year out of serving on the executive committee of the community oversight board. And then also, at a, uh, we're at a, the community oversight board was at a, a point where they were beginning to hear possibly three to four cases of uh, proposed resolution reports for the uh, in, in terms of investigations that the community oversight board has done. Uh, we must understand there's a difference between the community oversight board and the community oversight staff. The community oversight board staff investigates the allegations and complaints and makes a recommendation to the uh, community oversight board in terms of the proposed resolution solution that goes on to the police department. Thank you. What skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the community oversight board? But I have leadership skills. I have listening skills. I have partnership skills. I am also very embedded into the community uh, on several events. I've had uh, training, uh, pe people must understand the training that we went through with the police academy was set up for the community oversight board. So it's very different from the citizens police academy. I have attended the national conference uh, Community Oversight Board, I spent a week up there. The Community Oversight Board is, to me, just about a part-time job. Um, and I worked in the police uh, substation um, in West Nashville for several years, uh, uh, understanding police strategies and very much embedded in, in listening to the community. Thank you so much. Does anybody, I see Councilman Parker, you are recognized. Um, thank you, Chair, for recognizing me, uh, this Councilmember Parker, although I'm not a member of this committee. Um, I, I just wanted to, to, to say, um, you know, I've known, I've known Ms. Ross for um, several years as a community leader and an activist, and I'm super thrilled that she's decided to um, uh, apply for for reappointment to the board here, um, Ms. Ross. I was wondering, with your experience um, on the board since its inception, what um, do you see as the most important work of the board moving forward um, in the coming years? Okay, as a member of. Um 
the committee that wrote the policies and procedures, rules and regulations, and also the MOU. One of the most important things is community trust, uh, police policing strategies, and uh, the proposed resolution reports. Now that may be a difficult thing because the police on our first uh, proposed resolution report that was um, recommended that uh, our proposal was accepted. And that was a um, incident where a, a police officer did not take a uh, report from an individual who was in a car accident that was taken to the hospital. So one of the most important things is the police uh, proposed resolution report and how those reports uh, are sent to the police department. Also, some of the community things in terms of immigrant uh, license plates, readers, uh, homelessness. Uh, so it's very components of the what we do, what the community oversight board is able to do and not able to do, but mainly we have not been able, due to pandemic, to really reach out to our district council people and community organizations in terms of what's the responsibility of the community oversight board and the, the what complaints we can hear and cannot hear. And I would like to see that in the future. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? I am seeing none, and we have about 30 more seconds. Um, if you want to add anything for 30 seconds, you are welcome to it. Yes, I would like everybody to look at the annual report that the Community Oversight Board uh, sent to the state. We have to present our annual report. And one of the things I'm concerned about that we uh, are is the area that complaints are coming from and that we are behind or have not heard eight to 10 complaints that have been filed by the community. And that's mainly due to the pandemic. Thank you very much. Absolutely, Ms. Ross, thank you for joining us. Does anyone have any objections to this nominee? Please raise your virtual hand. And I am seeing none. Um, I did want to say that Ms. Ross was nominated by our Revolution Nashville uh, and Middle Tennessee. And then uh, also uh, Mr. Ravenel was nominated by petition and Councilman Rosenberg. I forgot to mention. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Ms. Carol Swain uh, nominated by the Colonel Order of Police. Ms. Swain, are you with us? Ms. Swain? I know I saw her name. I'm here. Oh, there. Perfect. Now I hear you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, why Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Are you able to see me and hear me? I can see you and hear you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm served. I accepted uh, the nomination and followed through with an application because I believe I offer a unique uh, background and skill set in that I have the trust of many people from different communities. Uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with uh, the police department because of having been for mayor. I've been in every community. I'm a part of you know, the black community, but I'm also a person that realizes there has to be trust between the police department and the COB, as well as the black community and other communities. And as I see the board uh, today, there's a sense that there's not very much viewpoint diversity. And often we find that there's a rush to judgment, that uh, cases are tried in the media. And I believe because of my academic background and knowledge of criminal justice issues, that I would be able to at least have input when these situations seem to get out of hand by reminding people about the presumption of innocence, due process, 
and also with the community to help teach uh, people that may not understand how law enforcement uh, works so that the community knows what to expect, as well as the law enforcement side where you would have people that would feel that they were going to get a fair evaluation from the board. And the board needs to be bipartisan. It shouldn't be one uh, token conservative. Hopefully, there would be people that uh, would support the police and as well as the community. And I believe that I can bring diversity and understanding and a background that, um, again, that's unique. Thank you. What skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? Well, I have been a professor of, of political science and law uh, at Vanderbilt. I taught there for 18 years. I do have a law degree, but not a JD. I have a degree in criminal justice. At one time, I seriously considered becoming a law enforcement officer, but I followed a different direction. And I have raised two sons. Uh, I've been married, you know, to uh, black men. <laughs> and. Um, I have I have seven brothers, not all alive, but I've experienced through my family interactions with the criminal justice system. And I myself, during the time I was at Princeton, I moved there with two teenage boys and they experienced racial profiling. And because of my actions, there was an investigation. It led to police reforms, not just in the town, of uh, Princeton, but also the entire community. The pol police officers were trained. And, uh, and so I can see it from many different aspects. But my educational background, the fact that I have been actively involved, and when it comes to civil rights, I was appointed twice to the Tennessee Advisory Committee to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. I have testified before Congress on several different issues. And I've also been involved with the U.S. Civil Rights uh, Commission on a number of different issues in the past. Plus, I've taught courses on civil rights, and I closely follow the cases that take place uh, in the nation. So I'm looking at it not just from the local level, but also from a national perspective. Thank you so much. Council Lady Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. Ms. Wayne, um, your views on immigration and multiculturalism have been yes. concerning to many, including myself, uh, stating that multiculturalism does not work and that immigrants need to assimilate fully. On the COB, you will come in contact with um, many people from the immigrant community and undocumented community. So how, how can you reassure us that your bias will not affect a case that might involve someone from that community? I would argue that my positions are not based on bias. My position positions are based on having studied identity politics and multiculturalism and my intimate knowledge of watching it play out. And so I do believe in the rule of law, but I also believe as a Christian, that all people are created in the image of God, that we're to show compassion and love to all. And I have um, assisted in the immigrant community. And I find that a lot of people that talk a good game, have they ever uh, gone to Tusculum and uh, worked uh, with immigrant children? Have they ever worked in immigrant homes? Have they ever done anything for immigrants? I don't know about you all, but I know I have. And I, I've done it all my life. I care about people. I love people. And I'm not looking for something extra to do that's meaningless. I want to give to the community because I have been blessed. I have a unique skill set. And I think that I can see issues from more than one perspective. So, so you could assure us that if someone is undocumented and a case involving someone that's undocumented comes before the COB, and if you are appointed to this board, then them being undocumented would not affect how you treated them of course from not. what's I, outside the law. Of course not. I care about all people, and I've always cared about all people. And you may not understand my perspective, 
but maybe we would get to know each other and you would see that I'm not a boogie woman uh, and that my views have merit and they don't come from any animus towards any group. Thank you, Chair. Absolutely. Um, we, we've gone over our six minutes. Uh, Council Lady Lee, if you will email me your question for, uh, for Dr. Swain, um, I'm happy to get that question answered for you. Um, does anybody have any objection to this nominee? Please raise your hand. Council Lady Lee, are you objecting? Is that an objection, Council Lady Lee? I'm sorry, my hand is still up for my question. I had to get it on my phone. That's a little harder than my. Um... Okay, so you're so you're not objecting. Yes. Yes. You are. You are objecting. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to list off who has their hand raised so that it will be read into the record. Council Lady Lee objects. Council Lady Sepulveda objects. Councilman Rosenberg objects. Council Lady Benedict objects. Councilman Rutherford objects. And that's all I have so far. Oh. All right. Order, order. May I make one last comment? Uh, nice sure. Here. Yes. Uh, Hang on just a second, Councilman Poli. I want to give Dr. Swain a sh Go ahead. I didn't that was a point of order. I I did not expect uh, support from the uh, partisan city council, but I do hope that you would take seriously the nominees of the FOP. You have four positions, please give them at least two. And it doesn't have to be me, but please try to have balance. Then you will have credibility and the respect of all Nashvilleans. Thank you, Councilman Pulley, point of order. Yes, you mentioned uh, Councilmember Benedict uh, as a no vote. Is she on the committee? And, and then aren't we taking committee votes here? You are correct. I'm sorry. Um, if you will raise your hand if you objected, please, because I need to go back and, and make sure that um, it was just in the committee. Um, so I see one, two, hang on just a second. Yes, so Rosenberg. Sepulveda, Lee, and Rutherford. So four objections from the uh, from the committee. Thank you. Madam yeah, Chair, how many members of the committee are here who voted yes? Um, we have uh, Council Lady Stiles is here, so we have uh, one, two. Well, actually, Lee is here now as well. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight present, and four objected. Okay, so four yes and four no. Correct. That's what I have. Um, Director Cooper, or is he still here? Or Hannah? Um, I think that's this, this is Hannah. That's what that's what I okay. have as well. Assuming that everybody that you've called is still present in the meeting. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Dr. Swain. Um, Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark Wynn, um, also nominated by the Fraternal Order of Police. Mr. Wynn, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Perfect. Thank you so much. Why do you want to serve on this particular board? Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank the council for allowing me to uh, put in my nomination in for this board. I, I'm indebted to Nashville. Um, you know, I, I'm not a Nashvilleian. I'm from Columbia, Tennessee. I came here in 79 to get a job with the police department. And the work that I do today, I could not do had I not been allowed to be a police officer. In the years I worked there, the 20 three years. I worked as a patrol officer, patrol sergeant, homicide detective. I worked in our intelligence division. I taught at our academy. I was a SWAT officer for 15 years. Um, and in the last six years, I supervised in the domestic violence division, which I helped create uh, with a lot of really talented people, which is still in place today. So I'm indebted to Nashville. My, you know, my wife and I started a nonprofit here in Nashville 20 years ago, the Mary Paris Center. It's a transitional housing program for victims of domestic sexual violence so you know when i saw the the nomination come up you know the FP, fop asked me and i said absolutely i'd like to get involved because because of the work that i've done at nashville i'm now what i would call a professional police reformer and i can explain this to you for the last 20 years now um as an independent consultant i've worked for the u.s department of justice in three different divisions 
the Office of Violence Against Women, the Office of Victims of Crime, and the Civil Rights Division at the Department of Justice, and along with uh, the U.S. State Department. I'm, I'm a Fulbright specialist for the State Department, where I've worked in about 16 other countries on gender-based violence and uh, anti-bias policing for the State Department. Uh, most recently, I just finished a two-year uh, investigation of the Chicago Police Department. After they had the Laquan McDonald shooting, uh, the Civil Rights asked me to take a look at the way they investigate their officer-involved domestic and sexual violence because they thought there was a link between violence at home and violence in the street. And all of our work was put in the finding for the Chicago Police, and they got it, uh, I think, in 2017, and they're now implementing some of those changes. So, uh, again, I, I'm indebted to Nashville because they gave me this ability to do this work, and that's uh, that's why I'd like to uh, take a shot at, at, some, at reform with the Metro Police. And by the way, and I'll say this too, I, I'm very proud of the work that I did at Nashville. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a nonconformist in a way, and that when I saw issues within within the Metro Police, I realized we had to reform it. And one of those is the way we dealt with family violence. And in particular, the way we dealt with officer-involved domestic and sexual violence. Because when I worked in homicide, I saw a double standard. And I saw a culture inside the Metro Police Department that was destructive. And when Mayor Bredesen allowed me to put together the plan for the Domestic Violence Division, I was able to convince Chief Kirster at the time to allow us to change our strategies on how we deal with officers in domestic violence cases, and since that time in 95, they now investigate, they now prosecute and arrest officers for domestic violence. And I think that's uh, as a, as a pretty good measure of reform and accountability uh, that I held my own department to. As a matter of fact, it's one of the topics that I teach today for the Justice Department. So I'd like to, I'd like to get back. I've, I've got a lot of expertise in this. One of my employers is the International Association of Chiefs of Police. And presently, for them, I'm working on uh, several projects. And one is the Collaborative Reform Initiative. And what we do in the Collaborative Reform Initiative, we go inside police departments and pull them apart to look for the bias, to look for the racism, to look for the double standards, to look for the misogyny uh, inside police departments, and to help them put them back together. We're, we're about a year and a half into San Antonio police presently. And Pittsburgh Police is coming up next for our next project. So all the things that I've learned from this work, I would like to bring back to this oversight board to help you all uh, and help the police department reform and, and become the best police department in the country. I think it's got the capability. Sorry, that was a long answer to a short question. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and you sort of t uh, touched on it already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What skills and experience do you have that qualify you to serve on the Community Oversight Board? And I'll say you have one minute and 30 seconds. Well, I, you know, I spent three years on the national, uh, on the board of directors for the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. So you know, I'm used to working in a board environment. Plus, uh, I do a lot of work in what's called community coordinated response. It's called CCR. And, and what it is, is you go to a community and you help them build a partnership so they can then reform criminal justice to deal with child abuse, elder abuse, uh, human trafficking, domestic violence. And I've done that for, good Lord, probably 20 years now all over the, all of the United States. I've trained in every state and 16 other countries now. So I've, I've been on the road quite a bit. I'd like to get off the road a little bit and do some work here at home. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Councilman Nash, you are recognized. Councilman Nash. Yes. There you go. Yeah, basically just wanted to say, uh, hi, Heidi. We came out of the department about the same time, and I watched yeah. uh, Mark's career for many years, and proud to see him again. We both got a little gray hair. <laughs> we do. I've got less, actually, Bob, than you do, so. Councilor Lady Styles, you're recognized. We have four, 13 seconds. My apologies, Chair. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get on previously. I am a no to the previous vote. Okay. Um, I'm going to two calls. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Councilor Lady Gamble, I saw your hand go up. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Thank you. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, um, we are out of time for uh, Mr. Wynn. 
Does anybody object to this particular nominee? And Council Lady Stiles, you still have your hand up. Are you objecting or is it an old, in an old hand? There we go. All right. And I am seeing none. Thank you so much. Okay, from a procedure perspective, thank you for joining us, Mr. Wynn. Thank you, um, Ms. Johnson. Absolutely. Um, Hannah, from a procedure perspective, um, Councilor Styles uh, wants to object. She did. She wasn't able to raise her hand at the time. I think she's in planning. Um, do you? Can we change that to five no, three yes, or, do, or does does the vote stand at four and four? Well, this this is Hannah Zeitlin. Uh, so technically, that vote was. Um, over and, and taken. I think that the committee could reconsider the vote, and I think that it might be a good idea to just do a straight roll call vote to get everybody on the record. Okay, that's well, that's what I'm going to do. So we are going to go back to address uh, uh, Dr. Swain. So let me get all my names. Um, all right, if you will answer either yes or no, uh, Councilman Rosenberg. No. Council Lady Evans. Uh, yes. Council Lady Lee. No. Uh, Council, uh, Ms. Murphy. Uh, Councilman Rutherford. No. Council Lady Sepulveda. No. Is Councilman Sludge with us now? I don't think so. Uh, Council Lady Stiles. Council Lady Stiles. I know she's toggling back and forth with planning. Oh, she still should be here. Council Lady Stiles, you're a no vote. Hannah, I don't know what to do at this point. <laughs> uh, I think uh, maybe just move on to, to the last two and then maybe we can circle back around and she'll have joined back. Okay, Johnson is a yes. Councilman Pulley? Yes. Okay, Council Lady Stiles, coming back to you. Chair? Yes. Oh, you were just there. Chair, can you hear me now? Now I can, yes. Okay. I right, thank you. Okay, so you're a no vote? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so I have five and three. Hannah, are we in agreement? Five, That's no, and Correct. That's also what I have. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate everyone coming. We only went eight minutes over, which I'm kind of impressed with. Um, again, if you have any questions, and I'll, I'll extend this to all council members, not just the committee members. If you have any other questions, um, because of the lack of time, which I totally understand, please email me those questions and the nominee to which you would like for me to extend those questions. I will get them answered and I will send it back out to all of the, uh, all the council members um, before our uh, Tuesday meeting where we are going to be actually voting um, on these 13 nominees. Um, and with that, I believe we are adjourned. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.com. Yeah.